Hi everyone, it's Jess here at Prairie Collective. I wanted to do a little short demo on a special that we are going to featuring, be featuring um, this coming month of February. Actually, we're going to start it next week because, drum roll please, we are opening Tuesday. Um, it sounds like the province is letting us reopen finally after being shut down for 10 weeks again this time around. Um, so Tuesday we will be reopening. Um, we will be open 12 till 4. We'll continue with those hours through these winter months. Um, yeah, so we can have limited capacity in the store. Our capacity is four people. Um, that would be 25% of our capacity. So we are allowed four shoppers at a time. And again, just continue to follow the signage and the rules for coming in and shopping in person. But we are very excited to have you set foot in the store again. Um, so, what we are going to do show you today is actually we are putting together a cabinet kit. I know we did it earlier in the year, um, but there's lots of you at home looking at your kitchens and thinking it needs an update. So this is your chance to do that update. So we are going to show you how in some very easy steps and then show you what's all in the kit that you get for painting your kitchen cabinets out. So what we are gonna do is most people um, have a wood cabinet. Obviously if you have a non-wood cabinet, this kit will work just as well. Um, what you start with is using some TSP or Fusion's version. Um, we have a TSP alternative. So it's actually phosphate free, um, which is healthier and safer for you. And what you wanna do is it's a concentrate. So you just mix it with a bit of water um, spray your piece down. Obviously kitchen cabinets have a lot of grease and grime. So this is a very important step because any grease that is on the cabinet door um, will obviously resist the paint and the paint will not be allowed to or be able to stick to it. So this cleaning with TSP is a very, very important step. Um, so make sure you take the time to do that. So, easy as that. Once it's all clean, you are ready to give it a light scuff. Now, you will get some sandpaper in the kit and give it a light scuff. Obviously, you don't have to scuff through um, all the varnish. Basically, what you're doing is taking, um, roughing up the, the top surface to make um, places for the paint to adhere really well, but also, yeah, the primer then can grip to the open surfaces, but you don't have to take the varnish off completely. So go with the direction of the grain always. So, and as you can see, I'm making just a little bit of dust, but I'm not sanding them all the way. Whoops. And I'm not too worried about getting in sandpaper in the grooves because obviously where chips happen are on the raised surfaces. So that's where I want to concentrate my effort. So after it's all been sanded, wipe away your dust. Of course, also really important. Give it a good wipe. And then you're going to come in with our Ultra Grip, which is an adhesion primer. So this product again comes in your kit. It looks white, but it actually goes on and dries transparent. So in your kit, you'll get a sponge. And what you do is just put some on your sponge. It's kind of like the glue. This sticks to your cabinet door. And as you can see, I'm putting it on fairly thin, going with the green but it's almost like I'm just washing the cabinet with it. So, super simple step. Like I said, it's kind of like glue. So, if you have gloves, I would wear them because you might be peeling this stuff off your fingers for a couple days. So that is it. It takes very little time to dry. Um, so we're gonna come back in about half an hour and we will do the painting step. Okay, so on to our next step. Now we have let the Ultra Grip dry. And normally we don't have to, I didn't mention it earlier, but normally we don't have to apply Ultra Grip to a wood surface. We just have to give it a light scuff um, and clean. 
but being that this is a kitchen, a very high traffic area, um, it's not going to hurt to do that ultra grip. It's actually going to give it just a little bit of extra durability. So um, even though it's not necessary, it is uh, something that we are including in the kitchen kit because if you're going to go to the, to the uh, effort of redoing your kitchen by painting, um, you don't want to have to redo it. So we want to do everything kind of right the first time. So um, yes, ultra grip normally wouldn't ne be necessary on the wood. But if you have like those cheap veneered or laminated cupboards, um, this works great. This is what you definitely want to put on before you start painting. So anyway, that is on. It's been dried. Um, now we go to painting. So I, I really like using a brush. Obviously, um, if you've got a lot of recessed spaces on your cabinet, you will find a brush is very handy thing to paint with. So I'm doing it pretty generous. And as you can see, one coat is covering really well. Um, the kit does come with a roller. So if I wanted, I could take my roller as well in the tray and roll on the flat surfaces. But because this cabinet has a lot of recessed places, I'm using a brush for it. So a nice generous coat. Um, if you find you have a lot of brush strokes, I would suggest just giving it a light wet sanding between the layers that actually buffs away any of the strong um, brush strokes. So, but um, Fusion is self leveling. So that means after you've put it on, it's gonna actually settle and level a little bit. Um, eliminating a lot of the brush strokes. So as you can see, we've got really good coverage on that first coat. So I always, always, always recommend two coats. Even if you think you don't need a second coat, in some lighting, you'll get your coverage up and you'll realize you missed a spot. So always, always do two coats. Um, I put some of the colors that are really popular for kitchens. We've had lots of people do kitchens with us um, by using Fusion. So uh, um, ash is this dark dark gray that one actually um, my employee kitty has done and I can post a photo of her finished kitchen in that color it turned out beautifully then little lamb is a really nice mid-tone gray then a lighter gray we've got as pebble raw silk is a really popular cream it's sort of a farmhouse white so it's not too yellow it's just a little bit of ivory and then our classic white is always a great choice for kitchens now I will say with white, because there's zero color pigmentation in it, you will definitely need two coats. And some cases you'll need three coats. Um, when you're covering oak for one, as an example, it has a really strong grain. So oftentimes it's gonna take three, the odd time four coats to cover that grain because it's just so strong that it comes through that transparent, um, the lighter, lighter colors like white. So. Just as a, a warning, if you do choose white, you may need to do a third coat just to get a really good solid coverage on that. So when you are done painting your first coat, you can go back and do your second coat. Obviously when you're doing a kitchen, you've got multiple doors to do. And I really like finding a space where I can put all the doors out and set them up on either soup cans or blocks of wood, something where they're raised so that as you can see, if I let this dry, um, the edge is going to stick to my table. So I like setting it up on cans or something um, to have it raised so you can do your edge really nicely and not have any sticking. Obviously you're going to um, decide if you're gonna paint the inside of the doors. So then you're going to let it dry, flip, paint, dry, flip, paint, and you're obviously gonna do that two times, right? So yes, kitchens are a lot of work, but they are so worth it. It's a night and day difference when you can have um, a completely different look to your kitchen. And as you can see already, got, got rid of all that orangey oak and it's gonna be a beautiful color. The one I'm using here is putty and you get to pick the color that comes in your kit. You're gonna get three jars of paint and that will do an average size kitchen. Um, you'll also get the Ultra Grip, which is the primer. You will get the TSP 
alternative, which is to clean it. You'll get your roller, your brush, your sponge, your sandpaper, as well as a tough coat. And that we will get to here uh, once this is completely dry. It is an option. The paint comes with the top coat built in, but because it is, like I said, a really high traffic area, it's never a bad idea to do a kitchen cabinet with an extra added top coat. So we'll do that at the very end. Okay, so we are on to our final step um, with our cupboard door. So what I wanna do is actually I've taped off three sections. Now, um, that's just for my uh, example today. I wanted to show you three different finishes that you can give your cupboards. So the top we are going to, um, actually the bottom, we're gonna put the clear coat on the bottom. So with the kit, you get the Fusion Tough Coat, it's called, and it is a resin content. So I washed the sponge that I had the Ultra Grip on, and I'm just going to use it now again for the clear coat. And it basically goes on kind of like, um, it's very watery, so just like a clear wipe down. Go with the grain is your best technique. And it comes in matte or glossy. So if you prefer a more glossy finish, make sure you ask for the glossy tough coat. But that is the tough coat and it's just a clear barrier, um, gives an added protection from scratches and scuffs. So that is doing the clear coat. Then second option would be just to simply distress the piece. So by distressing it, I mean taking some sandpaper and we're actually gonna rough up the edges just to expose the wood that's underneath. So with that, it gives you a little bit more of a rustic look. Some people um, like this look, some people don't. But I just wanted to show you that that is how you would get that look. You can scuff any part of it. Um, the obvious places are to sand the edges um, like that. So that's giving a kind of a distressed look. Obviously, if you painted two coats of paint, you could sand through the top coat to get to seeing the coat of paint that's underneath. So I could have done another coat um, of paint before the, the taupe color, and I would have had a two-tone effect when I sanded. But instead, this just sanded to the, to the wood. So if you have a dark wood, that's where it looks really nice. It kind of highlights um, those edges. So that's just dressing. And then lastly, I wanna show you is with using Fusion's Wax. So this is a product that you can put on. It does help the durability, um, but what it does is actually is going to highlight some of the deep recessed areas of the, the piece, if you have beveled edges and such, and also change the color a little bit. So it comes in different colors, but the one I chose today to put over putty is black. And it's sort of like a glaze, but I'm just taking an old brush and putting it in the recessed areas, quite heavy. And then I'm taking a paper towel and I am wiping back that wax. And as you can see, when I'm wiping back, the texture of the wood grain is coming out and you can see that in here. So that wax is actually staying in the grooves and giving you that texture. And so this is what a wax finish looks like. So as you can see, it totally gives three different looks. So there's lots of different techniques or lots of different looks you can get when you change the color of the wax, obviously the color of the paint. So yeah, that is our finished cupboard door. As you can see, kitchen cabinets um, basically like painting furniture. You just have to take your time, take all the doors off and the hardware off, prep your space so that you've got room to work with your cabinet doors. Um, giving them a good two weeks to three weeks cure time is the best results you can get. Um, and once it's on there and cured, this paint is not going anywhere. It, because it has that content of resin in it, it's really going to dry to a hard finish. So. 
there you have it. If you are interested in getting one of our kitchen cabinet kits, you can just comment or message us, um, phone us. We can do curbside for the rest of the week, um, but we will be open shop next week starting Tuesday from 12 till 4, Tuesday through Friday. And uh, you can come in and see the color selection for yourself as well. But we can help you choose colors online too. So if you have any questions, just um, don't be afraid to ask. And hope you guys have a great week. Bye.